Okay, welcome to the second lesson on learning target two on uh, unit two advanced probability strategies. This is learning target two adds, it's really just a carryover of what we did yesterday, um, but just including probability. We're going to stick with this theme for the whole unit, um, unless there's some kind of petition going around that that doesn't like this theme. I'm going to have to stick with it, uh, despite Mr. Berg not liking it. Okay, so the warm-up question for today, takes a bit to move. Um, what might be the probability, so I want you to think of this, what might be the probability that at least two people in our class, and so we're just going to say of 26, uh, that's, the, that's the number that my class has right now, um, but what's the probability that at least two people in the class of 26 have the same birthday? And so you can imagine, like, what I'm saying here is the exact same day. So my birthday is August 18th. What's the probability that um, in a class of 26 you have a matching people that have the exact same birthday? Um, so the question is, is it less than 10% between 10 and 20, between 20 and 30, between 30 and 50, and, and higher than 50? So I just want you to think about that and... Uh, like you don't have to think about it for very long and just see what you would what you would actually think. The learning target today is uh, I can calculate complex probability problems that um, arrange objects in order or assign items to specific roles or categories using permutations. That's really what a permutation is, is, is looking at things in order um, or assigning people to specific categories or roles. Um, the birthday problem, she's going to walk through uh, actually how to calculate this probability. Um, so we, we have to consider all of these cases. Uh, two people have the same birthday, because remember it's just like you have a matching pair. Um, think about how many, how many ways that could happen. Uh, each student can share a birthday with each other student, so you don't just have like um, I sh somebody shares a birthday with me. It's also somebody shares a birthday with somebody else, and 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 or they share a birthday with another student. And so you have each combination of every student sharing a birthday. Three people could share a birthday. So you think about how many ways can this happen? Miss the the question mark there. Um, and we've seen that when so many uncountable cases exist. This just boggles your mind to actually think about all the cases that you would have here. Uh, there's usually a quicker way, and the indirect method often gives us that way. And so what we're going to do is actually like calculate it in this way. Um, we're going to do like N of S is the total number of ways that, that the students in the class can have a birthday. Uh, so the total number of ways that that can happen, um, the total number of ways that days can be distributed amongst 26 people. But then N of A prime, we call it A prime because it's what we don't want. Um, and so we just recognize that we're going to subtract that off at the end. But it's the total number of ways that the students have a different birthday. Now, that's a lot easier to think about than, than uh, having at least one, at least two people sharing a birthday. So the total number of ways that students have a different birthday. And you see where permutations start to like come in, come in mind here where we have like one less day every time for each student that, that we have. So we have 26 slots, one for each student, and so we've got the slots. We don't actually want to write out 26 slots. We've got a little dot, dot, dot in the middle. So you ask yourself, and I'll ask you, like, how many ways can the first person have a birthday? And so we answer the question, 365. How many ways can the second person have a birthday? And so you say, well, is there any problem with having the first person? It has nothing to do with that. It's 365. The third person's 365. The fourth person's 365. The 25th person's 365. And the 26th person is 365. And so if you think about that, how do you do that? How many number of ways? Uh, you've got N of S equaling 365 to the exponent 26. You're not going to sit there, I hope, 26 times multiply 365. Uh, we can use exponents to shortcut this. This is an incredibly large number. Uh, I had to actually get Excel to calculate this for me because 
not every calculator will actually do that. It's just too big. 26 slots. If we want to find out how many ways we have a different birthday, we've got 26 slots, one for each student. And so we draw the slots, but we don't want to write all 26. So we do a little dot, dot, dot in the middle just to give us the idea. How many ways can the first student have a birthday? We've got 365. How many ways can the second student have a birthday? Well, can't be, they have to have a different birthday. So you've got 364. And then 363, 362, 341, that's a little bit complicated how you get that. And 340 is the last number. This is not that important that you understand that this is 341 and 340. What you have to understand is this happens 26 times. We learned yesterday like a strategy for that and that the strategy for that, as long as you understand that there's 26 slots, you can say it's 365P26. Um, that will naturally, uh, now you can naturally understand that 340 to 365 is 26. Uh, but that can be a little confusing. Like a lot of people could think 339 is the last number, but this is 26 numbers. Remember you're counting zero first, one, and then so on. Continuing on, if we wanted to find out the probability of A prime, that's a lot easier than finding out the probability of A. Um, if we do N of A divided by N of S, which we just calculated, N of A prime divided by N of S, um, we could get uh, something like this. We get an answer of, uh, like actually I got Excel to do this. A uh, calculator will do it all at once. Uh, you, you do need that permutation button. You, you don't actually want to sit there and and calculate that with factorials. Uh, you don't want to sit there and calculate that by hand. Uh, you do need that permutation button. Um, it's important that you have a calculator that can do that. Um, just if you actually want to get the, the, the numbers and see what it looks like. We get 40.18%. Um, I don't know if that's blowing your mind yet, but what that's saying is the probability of A, probability that there is a match in this class of 26 students, a whopping 59.82%. That's very exciting. Uh, it's kind of neat to think that, that, that that's the probability. Um, it doesn't mean that we're going to have a match in our class. Uh, we're 60% likely to have a match. so. We're more likely than not. Uh, most of my classes I teach, um, a lot of times we do get a match. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we leave the, the birthdays up on the wall to see if the next class gets a match, to at least see if we didn't get a match, that they get one with more students. Um, you can imagine as the students increase, this number will get bigger. Um, an interesting question is, how much bigger will it get? If you had a class of 30, if you had a class of 40, how much how much bigger does that get? Uh, that's a really interesting question. Okay. Second example, uh, 40 people are entered in a raffle. Seven family men members are entered in the raffle for different prizes. I don't mean a, a family of seven, like with two parents and five kids. It could be that. I don't I don't care how you interpret that. It could be like Two parents, two grandparents. It could be, it could be a, a mom and her two parents. It could be, it could be a mom and her aunt and her, or, sorry, a mom and her sister and their kids and cousins. I don't, I don't really care. So seven family members are entered in the raffle for five different prizes. The key here is the different prizes. Um, what's the probability that five of the seven family members will win the prize? It means they win them all. Um, what's the probability that they win all the prizes? So to do that, like we kind of we kind of put together N of A and N of S. Um, I did this backwards this time, but that's fine. Like N of A, we have five slots for each prize winner. So we're just trying to figure out how many ways can the can the um, can the seven family members actually win the five prizes? So we got five five slots for each prize. Let's get the five slots. Uh, seven ways to do the first one. If one of the family members wins, six ways to do the second one. 
five ways to do the third one, four ways to do it, and then three ways to do the last one. Um, and the reason why it's seven is because you have seven family members. You want them all to win prizes. So it's seven ways, six ways, five ways, four ways, three ways. That's 7P5, and it, it's it's pretty quick to calculate without permutation button, but it's 2520. N of S, uh, you might want to look at this one first. Um, so after you watch the whole thing, you might want to understand N of S. Um, there's still five slots, one for each prize, but there are 40 ways to do the first prize, 39 ways to give out the second prize, 38, 37, 36. So we get a total of 40p5, which is a lot bigger, like there's 78,960,960. That's total ways to give out the five prizes. Um, that, that's counting the five prizes as different. It's also kind of recognized, it's also assuming that after you win a prize, you don't stay in the raffle. Like your, your name gets taken out and doesn't go back in, which makes sense. Probability that that the five prizes go to the go to five of the family members is twenty five twenty out of seventy eight million, which you can imagine is a very low percentage. That is the percentage after you multiply by a hundred. So the actual the actual decimal is point zero 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 three two, uh, but it's a very small probability that that the five family members will win the five prizes. This is kind of start to talk about a lottery. Um, in combinations, we'll talk more about the lottery. Um, and it isn't very different, the probability. Like, it's a very unlikely thing to happen. Unlikely thing to happen. That's basically it. Oh, we got to practice uh, page 93. These are all prop permutation questions. They're all good to work on. Uh, it's really good to get practice with a lot of different probability questions. Some of these are the birthday problem come up again. Uh, so you actually have to like redo the birthday problem with a different number of people. Um, I added this question uh, just really to make you think about it. And this is coming up in the next unit. Um, if you had a raffle with 40 people and you wanted to find out how many ways could the seven family members win all five prizes, but the prizes were the same. So the order and the prizes were given out did not matter. What, what would the probability be higher, lower, the same? And who cares? It's so small. Why do we even care about this? Uh, it's a good question. But for now, it's uh, probably D is not the right answer. Um, and so A, B, and C. Uh, I just want you to think about that before tomorrow, before the next lesson on combinations. You can't really do the calculation right now because we don't have that, that basis. You can try it if you want to think about it. Um, and I'll get you ready for the next lesson. All right. Enjoy. Where's my stop?